How you guys doing here? Alex here, licensed CPA and realtor. Now, balancing personal life and business ownership. Let's see what we got and uh, let's jump right to it. So tonight we have Cesar. Why don't you introduce yourself? Hey everyone, it's uh, Cesar Jimenez, um, licensed real estate uh, sales agent for Keller Williams. Uh, I've been in the industry uh, for almost a year and balancing personal life and real estate was going to be a, a fun topic for sure. <laughs> and we have Paul. Um, Paul, you want to give a little spiel? Yeah, I'm Paul Chong with Cardinal Financial. Um, been in the mortgage business 10 years and balancing personal life and business is what I'm here to talk about. I, I got one kid and another one on the way in March, so I'm trying to learn. Absolutely. Um, I guess a little background on me. Um, when I became an agent, my wife was pregnant. Do I have the timeline correct? Uh, and I do have a second one now. And I will have to openly admit that the balance between family life and business ownership has been quite a doozy, uh, especially with all the things that have been going on in the world. But um, this is part of the reason why I want to get into this conversation, right? I know that there are plenty of folks who are running their businesses or side hustles and whatever have you. Um, obviously, from our standpoint, we're real estate agents, and so our business is our realty business, right? Um, whether it's as an agent or as a lender um, or dealing with other realtors, it's just, it's just it is what it is, right? But um, I remember having a conversation uh, previously with Caesar. Um, you come from an interesting background, right? Where work-life balance wasn't really a thing, right? Right. Um, yeah, so before I became a real estate agent, I was a uh, executive chef and owner of my restaurant. Um, unfortunately, uh, my business, my ex-business partner and I, we closed due to COVID, uh, but we were going into our third year. Um, and just prior to me actually being able to open a restaurant in like one of the toughest, you know, cities in the world, uh, I've been professionally working in, you know, kitchens. Uh, that was my thing. So just like Alex said, uh, or you said, Alex, right. Uh, I really didn't have a schedule. It was just my whole life was just being in that kitchen. You know, I didn't really balance anything cause there was just no time. Um, and you know, I had an actual schedule, you know, regardless if I was a line cook, sous chef, executive, like I knew I had to be in the kitchen at this time. And then whenever I get out with real estate, on the other hand, now this is different because there's so much freedom, you know, I get it. Independent contractor, you make your own schedule. I'm not used to that at all. I'm, I'm programmed to be in the kitchen from whatever time I know I have to be in and then stay there till whenever I get out. But here it's like, I hear from agents, oh, well, you know, you gotta maybe do some, uh, some uh, yoga and some like Zen planning, you know, two hours before your phone calls. And then you do your phone calls from like this time to this time. And then sure, you get your lunch break and then maybe work on some media or read a book maybe for a half hour. It's like, there's so many things to do. And I'm like, I don't know how to schedule this shit. I really don't. Um, but, you know, uh, I obviously went in the beginning treating it as if I were in the kitchen, if you will. So I said, okay, I know there's a typical nine to five. Let me find out when the office opens. The office opens at this time. Okay, I'll be in at this time. And then I guess I'll clock out at this time and just try that. And then it felt great because I'm like, oh, wow, I could actually like meet up with some friends and have some dinner you know, or go out with the girlfriend or whatever, you know, type of stuff. I'm like, wow, I'm really liking it. But then as I started going, um, the accountability started hitting my personal, like mental game. I'm like, oh man, like, okay. So I only worked for three hours today. I guess I'm okay with that. I want to go to the bar, you know, get a drink and just shut down. And then I started getting a little too comfortable with that. And then it's like, oh no, this is not good. There's too much freedom, mm -hmm. you know? So it's real. I think it's really difficult 
for those who have this type of career, you know, to balance your personal life and, you know, work. I, I, it's been a challenge, but it's all about discipline, right? You, you got to have accountability for yourself. You have to have discipline. Um, and obviously a routine, I think routine is key. And if you kind of focus on that, you're going to do well, but it's, it's, it's been challenging. It sounds like you kind of fall along with the, uh, is it Alex Harmozy, where he's like, he actually goes contrary to, you know, what a lot of high level producers will do, right? So nowadays mm -hmm. it's all about, you know, the morning meditations, the journaling, the, and he's like, bump all that, do more work, just work, right? right. Just roll your sleeves, forget all that, execute, period, right? Um, and I think, you know, it's one of those different strokes for different folks. Um, and, I, and if I'm being honest, I think there's a certain level of, like, I don't know how I feel about waking up, sitting there, finding my inner peace, and somehow finding another gear suddenly from this realization. Right. right. Um, that is not to say I think it's all nonsense, right? Because I see, I see when it works. Right. It's just that my, you know, the different strokes, the folks, my personal thing is I wake up and my reality is I'm up because my son's up at five o'clock. Right. So there's mm -hmm. no, let me sit in a quiet, peaceful, no, wake your ass up. Your son needs something. Breakfast, right. new diapers, something, right? Mrs. has got to get, she's got to get ready for work. And now I have a second one. So diaper, food, 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 juggle, like up, sleeves up, let's go, crank. Now, I think the problem that I'm having is that my kids are my schedule. Like my schedule mm -hmm. revolves around them, right? And so... The effect, for me, it, was, it turned out to be a fallacy that, hey, I'll wake up early, I'll get some stuff done, like I'll prep the kids' stuff, get them ready to mm -hmm. go to school, and then I'll have my time. I'll, I'm, I should be done, like how all these other folks are saying, dude, by the time like 10, 11 o'clock rolls, all my hard work is done, and the rest I could just do follow ups and, and post. Bro, it's like 10 o'clock when I just got the, the, the grease fires done, right? And now I'm scrambling to try to catch up to all the work that I should or didn't do, right? And I find myself in a situation where I'm like, you know, I put my head down at night and I'm like, God damn it, I, what, what did I actually get done, right? And I think it's, and, and, and there's no woe is me, right? Because I think, you know, we're all kind of sitting there in that, and that the pros and cons, we make our own schedule. The con is you don't execute, you don't execute, you don't eat, right? And I was fortunate to have the closings that I had, but now I'm at that point of like, you should have something in your pipeline and you have bills due, right? What do you right. do? What do you do? You know? But I think I'm not the only one with, with a kid problems now, right, Paul? <laughs> oh, oh yeah, you know, like, um, my my one year old well she's seventeen months now and nice. now she starts to talk. Now she's <laughs> able to move around and explore she you know, she likes to touch things she knows she's not supposed to look at you. And like, what are you gonna do about it? And so like every every day's a test with her to see what she can get away with, what what the boundaries are. And then we have another one on the way in March, another girl. Oh wow, and congrats man. Thank you, thank you. Fantastic, um, awesome. Um, and it's a blessing, you know. Like I, it's it's more work, and I got to keep the mentality that the energy that I'm putting into work is for them. So right. it needs, you know, I need to amp it up and you know, figure it out for them. And there's in in the mortgage world, you know, it's a little different than you know being a realtor. But at the same time, there's a lot of things that are similar. You know, we have to put in the time to build our referral partners, to connect with our buyers and our clients, to earn their trust, 
right? So, you know, I'm sure you guys can relate to that. It's, it's, it takes time to do it, and it's not easy. It's not just like a quick text. It's a lot of follow-up, and um, finding time for that in the middle of the night when, when everyone's asleep. But then all your, all your clients don't want to be contacted at that time either. So it's, it's a challenge, but, you know, you got to do the best you can. Right. Yeah. I mean, like, I can't speak for any of the, you know, mommies and daddies out there that, you know, do have their children. I don't have kids yet. I do want, don't get me wrong. And I'm sure when, when that time comes, who knows, man, you know, cause, uh, yeah, I mean, you guys are living proof of, of how challenging it could be. Um, but for me, I guess, uh, my whole thing with having this type of like leisure, this freedom is it's very tricky, you know, again, like Alex wakes up, you wake up Paul to, to your kids. I'm not waking up to kids. So do I try that Zen yoga thing? Like, do I do that? I mean, to really be quite honest, like, I think that's a bit crock of shit. You know, I, I don't see how, I mean, look again, teach their own. If that works for you, good for you. But that's not how I'm built. You know, I'm, I'm very rugged. I'm a very like, you know, kind of gun ho chef mentality, you know, just get your ass in the kitchen, start working, put your head down and just drive through, you know? So the, then it's like the opposite of what your world is. Right. Exactly. So that's what I'm still trying to figure out because to me, the hours of a real estate agent for me personally, the physical aspect is a joke. I think it, it's, it's nothing to me. You know, I don't get me wrong. Like, um, to some people, because they never worked in a kitchen, you know, sure, they get tired uh, physically. But to me, I just kind of like laugh, not to be a jerk, but like I went into the office and I heard, oh my God, I've worked three hours. I'm already exhausted. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Three hours and you're exhausted? Like, do 16 hours in his kitchen, you know, then come talk to me. You know, I mean, to me, that's nothing. But the mental, the mental aspect of this game is by far the hardest I've ever experienced in my entire life. I think that trumps any type of, any type of moment, any chef, in my personal opinion, has had in the kitchen. You know, because real estate, when it comes to that part, it's draining. That is draining, you know. What, what's the thing? I think for me is, well, one, the notion that you're not getting a paycheck. That's, that's the biggest thing. So you know you have to chase, you have to find, okay? So that's one. And then two, it would be probably knowing that when you actually do speak to these people, are they really going to be the ones to get you to that next step? Which is obviously, you know, look, look, don't get me wrong. Um, if you're doing the right thing, you genuinely are going to help them and you want them to succeed because if they don't succeed, you don't succeed. Right. So I do 100% disagree to any agent. Um, if they come into this business, just seeking to get money, I think you're going to do poorly. Okay. So I didn't get into this business to, you know, like personally, I didn't get into this business to, to say to myself, I'm just trying to get a quick you know, bang for my buck. You know, I know that I knew it was going to, it was going to take time because I've have spoken to some real estate agents, but to me, the chances of, for me, again, recovering money would be a little bit more on my side than going back into the kitchen and starting from scratch. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, for me, I, now I know how to balance my work schedule because I do agree with you, Paul. I think towards the end of the night, I don't think any type of future buyer seller wants to hear a real estate agent say, you know, Hey, you know, and start with the script. No, they're coming home to children, to their loved ones. They want to unwind from work. I think the ideal thing is to catch them in the morning, maybe late afternoon. And then from there, like, I think for a real estate agent, if you don't have to do any showings or go to a listing appointment, your, your, your time is done, but there's other things you could do like media. Sure. So I could start working on my media at night, right? Alex, I could go on my Instagram, start making some, some, some reels. It's true. You know, 
that's the accountability. Like, am I being lazy? Am I not doing that? Reading. Am I reading real estate books? Am I looking at YouTube channels to, you know, learn, you know? So I think it's just that it's just really hard for, you know, someone like, again, for myself speaking personally, that has had just a gun home mentality of going in, leaving when, when the thing is done compared to now of managing, like, okay, what should I do? Where, yeah. where am I going? You know, that type of thing. And I think what's like, particular to this industry is also timing, right? You know, me mm-hmm. coming from a corporate background, you know when your paychecks are. Every other week, like clockwork, to be there, right? Day in, day out. Doesn't mean, like, you could execute to a certain percentage, right? As long as you don't get fired, you know that there's a regular paycheck coming in. It's consistent, like clockwork, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? Right. I would argue, as, when you're up and running, even a restaurant, whatever business, right? Most other, most businesses where it's transactional, do the work. Get out the product, you get paid. It's almost immediate, right? right? You, you make it, you cook a dish, sell it to your patron, patron gives you a card, swipe it, money, right? Obviously, right. there's a certain delay with processing fees, whatever, but it's not that bad. On real estate end, now we're now that we're headed to a more normal market, you might, if you, if, you know, if you want the listing side, this this property <laughs> at listing of yours might sit for three months, right? From three months, we'll go with the contract from the contract to when you actually physically get your pay in your bank account might be two months, right? Yeah. Like three months on market plus another two months, five months, you know, anywhere from four to six months I'm here, right? Depending on situations. You, if you don't have things lined up previously, you might be starving by the time that check comes in. Yeah. And you might think you're good because you got one lump sum and now you, and, you know, you, you repeat this process. And I think if you don't learn that lesson, like, you know, and, you know, it's part of this is me talking to myself because I'm that knucklehead, right? Hey, we're good for six months. We're good for, you know, mortgages, bills are going to be paid. And I'm realizing, mm-hmm. what the hell have I, have I been doing to close down business four months ago when I should have been locking down business four months ago, three right. months ago, two months ago. And now we're in a situation where I'm like, we're not going to be out on the street, but damn, like all the money that I could have capitalized on to lock down more investments for my family, to for financial security, I'm paying bills. Mm-hmm. Right? That's, that's. You know, and, and this, again, this isn't what was me. This is reality of, depending on what industry you're in, in, in our industry, you have to understand there's a lag time mm-hmm. between your feasts and your family, right? So if you need, if you understand the, the nature of your business, you should, you should be able to account for that and the lag time between. And I'm hoping that I knew this, and I still made this mistake. So for the new agents out there, where anyone's starting a new business, Please take this into account and don't be a dumbass. Work, you gotta grind, right? And that's the thing. Right. Like you said, no one's telling you, hey, get up. This is your deliverable by this date. You gotta get up. You gotta set your schedule. You need to figure out yeah. what you need done, when, how, right? Otherwise, who are you gonna blame? The, the other agent? No, this, uh, the community, the easiest thing is if something doesn't work, assume it's your fault, period. Yep. You know? <sighs> Yeah, no, I agree, man. To feed off of, of that, again, like when I, – I mean, I guess like my whole thing is um, I don't really think, you know, when you're a kid – and I could be completely off here, but, um, you know, you don't really grow up kind of saying – I mean, I've never heard saying like, well, what do you want to be when you grow up? Or I want to be a real estate agent. You know, I really never heard that. I've heard, you know, I want to be a doctor, lawyer. I've heard chef a couple of times, you know. Um, but I think those who get into real estate do it because it's almost like a last resort and they come in thinking they're going to make a shit ton of money right off the bat. Now, I personally felt like real estate stumbled onto me. I didn't seek for it because, again, um, you know, my whole life, my whole mentality was cooking. And when COVID came and shut down my restaurant, I'm like, you know, fuck, <laughs> what, what am I going to do? So then, you know, I honestly was in a very, very, very um, big hole, big rut. And I, I, I had to obviously, you know, lose my apartment and I moved back with my parents and got very depressed. And, you know, between talking to some of my friends and, and my father, my mother, you know, uh, 
And my father was saying, hey, you know, start learning my business, construction. You know, I'll show you the back end stuff. You can help me with the computer stuff because I'm not that good at that. Maybe you could be better. So I started learning that. And then once things started, you know, kind of, you know, kind of being COVID free, we got back out there and I started going to the work sites and, you know, started meeting some, some other real estate agents and people that my father knew. And they would tell me, you know, oh, you know, you should really try getting into real estate. You know, you have a good personality, this and that. I'm like... Yeah, I guess. Like, what do I got to lose? You know, but I did tell them. So, like, but is it, like, worth it? Is it good? He's like, well, and they'll tell me, like, listen, like, it's 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 a lot of tedious work. Don't expect to make a lot of money, you know, the first two years or maybe even more. Just know that it's going to take a while. But if you're able to hit, you know, you could recover some good money. And that was the key for me to do it is recover. So I'm like, okay, let me give this a shot. So I did it. And again, very fortunate, got two closings on my belt, two referrals. And, you know, granted, I haven't seen any reserve cap from that, but it's, it's been giving me the opportunity to chop off my debt, like pretty well, you know, granted it sucks, right? Alex, you got to wait three months, four months, six months to see that paycheck. But again, I'm in a position where, you know, thank God, you know, I, I have my, the parents that I have, um, you know, not paying rent, which is massive. You know, I'm now, like I said, starting to see a little bit of money. So I'm chipping in with utilities. Um, but yes, I could definitely see a, a great success in real estate if you put in the grind, you put in the work, you know, don't come in for new agents. Don't come in expecting that, you know, you're going to get handed things. Uh, like again, in a corporate world, you're not getting handed a paycheck. Granted you're working and you could do that work half ass, but you're still going to get a paycheck until you get fired. Mm -hmm. You know, me, I was comfortably, you know, living, being my exec and my own boss, my own restaurant, you know, I was getting close to six figures at that point. I was doing really well, you know, working from $9 an hour, then next thing you know, $12 to 15 to 22, then 60 K sous chef. And then, you know, I climbed up. So I got to do the same thing here, build that database, get three to four listings in a row, hopefully sell all of them. And then boom, maybe I'm in the 200 K mark already. You know, it, there's means to, to make money in this industry. You just got to put in the work, got to be disciplined. Then you got to figure out what works best for you. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's interesting, right? So part of it is getting the discipline to do it in a way where you can execute on your deals, right? Getting the discipline to get your schedule down and sticking by that schedule and figuring out means to be productive. But how have you been able to juggle this life with like a significant other? So Caesar would be you and your girlfriend while it would be with your wife, right? Like how has that transition been? Um, for me, it, it's, uh, I, I was working in the bank for like nine years and doing back office, doing the credit side, basically working with other banks to borrow and then returning the money basically. Um, and learning the back end of, uh, the mortgage business and I was getting tired of doing nine to five and overtime and, you know, working hourly basically. And when my wife was pregnant with our kids, you know, I, I was faced with the choice of how do I want to raise this, this girl, you know, I, I want to be there for her, you know, recitals, her dances or, you know, whatever she needs from me. and Having a, a nine to five doesn't have that flexibility for my schedule to be there. So, you know, I, luckily for me, I, I was always kind of conservative with my money and, you know, I was able to make a, a few good investments that are sustaining me right now. And um, I, I spoke with my wife to kind of let her know I, I might jump into this and not know what I'm doing and money might not come. And, you know, I had a, a reasonable expectation of how 
they would go the first year or two. Because, you know, in the loan officer world, we the same thing. Two years, you're probably not going to make money. And if you work hard enough and build your, your base, something's going to happen. Of course, you have outliers that are just they off the bat. They're just successful and they just have a natural it factor. But for the most part, you get into the game and you're kind of learning what it takes. And I had no idea what it takes. Being in the back office, you look at these loan officers, you're just like, if they can do it, like, how do they? How can they do it? How, how are they so successful? And then when you get in, it's a whole new world, and it's total respect to them because it's, it's not easy. Right. Yeah, yeah I think that's one of the things of mastery, right? Um, and I think we had this conversation uh, Caesar. It's one of those things where when someone reaches a certain level of mastery, they will always make it look easy, mm. right? Think about professional athletes, right? right. You're sitting there at a bar screaming, how do you, how do you drop the ball? Ta-da. And then you realize if you ever were to sit with these pros, you would get swept, mm-hmm. right? And I think that's where, unfortunately, I think a lot of the other, I mean, a lot of agents, current and past, Right. They're like, oh, all you got to do is close a couple of deals. You'll be swimming in six figures. All right. Did you yeah. know what it took to get those couple? The hours, right. the, the amount of people cursing you out, hanging up on you and, you know, this time and the third. Right. It takes real dedication and commitment and apologizing to significant others, family, spouses. You know, hey, babe, I'm sorry. I got to go take this again. Mm-hmm. Middle family dinners or when your kids screaming, babe, I got to go answer this call. Right, I gotta go follow up with this client. Were he having dinner? How do, you, how do you look him in the face? And look, what I've also realized is, where's the wisdom from, you know, players past? You know, when you talk to some of the higher performers, they say, look, I time block my my situa- my my life, right? And there's a certain level of my family, my partner, my friends. They're gonna have to understand this is my time. Right, like it or don't, but I think that's where this balance, right? Because I think most of the agents, and I can't speak for all of them, outside of this time, you call me for real estate, I'm not answering. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Like I think us young bucks, we we just need business however we can get it, right? right. So we're gonna say, look, you you know you might be in the middle of dinner on your anniversary. And someone picks up, oh, is this a bad time? No, 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 no. What's up? Right? Meanwhile, <laughs> you know, my wife's looking at me like, you, I'm going to murder you in your sleep. Answer this phone, I'm going to kill you. Alex Lee speaking. Right? And I think that's, it's tough, right? Um, I, 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 on the one hand, I'm thinking, I'm like, maybe I should do this, right? Don't answer my, like, let my clients know. I'm not answering the phone after 7 o'clock. Right? right? But on the other hand, I'm like, am I being arrogant and turning down potential business because I've earned my stripes, you know? So I'm kind of curious to see how you guys feel about that. Right. Yeah, that's that's really that's a that's a cool point that you just mentioned. Um, for me, I'm probably a little bit more fortunate again than others. Again, I can't I I can't really compare myself too much to everyone of course because everyone has different situations i mean you know once again i'm very fortunate very blessed to you know ha- have my parents take me in their home you know after me living on my own and being able to focus on my real estate you know some people don't have that luxury you know they they need to still pay their rent they still need to pay their mortgage they're probably tackling three jobs plus doing real estate you do what it takes right so that's why when i previously said the physical hours of this job has prepared me you know because of my 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 chef hours it's prepared me to just still do what i got to do you know if i have to work 16 hours as a real estate agent i could do it no problem and and this is where i'm coming again to say that I'm very fortunate that my friends and family already dealt with that for 36, 35 years. So this is nothing new to them. If I were to stop 
during a, a dinner and say, I got to take this. They're at least happy that I'm at dinner. So they'll, like I said, I'm very lucky. I'm very fortunate. And I can't imagine like your wife giving you the, those, those devil eyes, you know, and saying, if you take this call, you're going to be in trouble. You know, when I'm actually point in fact, it was my father's birthday. Um, and you know, I'm there with my family and I had to take a call and I missed almost the whole dinner because I was on the phone with the listing agent and the buyer and I was going back and forth. And to be honest, they weren't mad at me because again, it's like, at least he's here. You know, I was stuck in the kitchen 24 seven. You know, you ask anyone that's in that industry, waiters, barbacks, bartenders, like they, they don't have a social life. You know, their, their life begins at the bar after work for two, maybe three hours, you know, and they're not with their friends. I mean, they're not with their family, you know, they're actually with their coworkers or a, a buddy that, you know, happen to just meet you there. So again, for me, I'm just very blessed. I'm very fortunate to be able to, to do what I'm doing now and being able to manage my personal life pretty well. Um, compared to others that I can't possibly imagine how difficult it is for them to do it, you know, and my respect goes to them. But, you know, in the end, there's no excuse as far as putting in the work and putting in the hours. So that's what I meant. I didn't mean to come off, you know, douchey or arrogant. But to me, there's no excuse, no matter if you got to work, you got to work, just do it, just get it done, put in the hours, you know? So yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's, that's cool. That's a fact, right? It's not, I mean, it's not like sugar-coated, you know, sushi, fufu, whatever. Sometimes right. it's just a fact of life. That's a reality. And I think that's the reason why a lot of people don't jump into business ownership or this kind of industry, right? Because let's keep it real. There are certain businesses that you can have a really like nice semblance of work-life balance, right? Right. Just so happened we jumped into an industry that is not necessarily such, right? Um, and it is what it is, right? Um, for me, I didn't come into real estate because I was promised a million bucks, right? <laughs> or because it was the new fad thing. I, I jumped into real estate because I came in with the understanding of how wealth was built, right? And I wanted to kind of delve into it fee first and just see on an operator level, how this, how this functions, how this works so that I can build something for my family. Right? right. And thankfully, I mean, I do, I do joke around that, you know, my wife gives me crap, but you know, more times than not, it's, she, she understands what this is for. The only, the, of course. the only thing is there's a certain level of guilt of like, I'm putting in these hours, putting in these calls doing all this. And she's like, what's this for? What is that for? And it's not out of like judgment. It's just concern, right? It, she sees me putting in the work, but if I'm not executing on deals and the paychecks aren't coming in, how does that work on your psyche, right? Because mm -hmm. I could, I could, only, I could only deal with so many calls, and there, I mean, there are multiple opportunities where I'm thinking I'm getting close, I'm thinking I'm getting close, and then the nineteenth hour comes, and it's like, sorry, man, like we're gonna walk, right? That was, and from, and again, from if you work in corporate, if you work somewhere else, cool, like that was, it's whatever, just next thing up, and next paycheck still coming, right? But in this case, if that's what you got in your pipeline, that's that's your only lead, right? So, um, with that said, I mean, Caesar, you, you kind of intrigued me in the way that I, th I feel like you were like born for this work. Right. Thanks, man. Um, and in Paul, you, you touched on it earlier and I still, by the way, want to hear how you adjusted your life with your wife, but, uh, now you're going to add to this in terms of. How did you make the jump knowing full well that you might fail? So Paul, you start, answer the first question first though, because I'm curious. It's a good question. Okay. Um, like yeah, I guess it'll be both. I think it'll touch on both topics. Um, it, it starts with communication, with uh, me and my wife. Right. Um, me, me and her, we, we talk like honestly about where we see ourselves, what where what are our goals what are our expectations um and it started from when i first met her you know i was uh you know 
coming from a divorce. And when I met her, I wanted to just lay, lay it all out, you know, tell her what I want, what I expect, and for her to have that same um, ability to do the same to me, you know, talk, tell me what you expect. Because if you're, if you don't know what you want, then we're going to have issues later on when you don't, you know, get it, right? And when, once you can flush out what you see and where, where your vision is going, then we can work on getting there together. And that's, you know, that's kind of what we built our relationship on. And and we were talking about me getting into becoming a loan officer. You know, I, I try to be as conservative as I can because I, I can't bank on being successful off the jump. No. Uh, you know, I, I can bank on me putting in the work, putting in the time. And, you know, but all the other things are out of, out of my control. Um, so when when someone calls me at seven o'clock, I'm I'm picking it up, and she, you know, I just give her a look, and she understands it's <laughs> because at the end of the day, it's it's for us, right? Like right. you know, it's for our future, and she kind of she understands it for sure. Um, I, I'm sorry. What was the second question? So how'd you make the jump, knowing you might fail? Right. So knowing I might fail, I I kind of built a little parachute of, of savings and kind of like, Hey, uh, I can live off of this. I, I haven't bought a new shirt in <laughs> you know, like, uh, you That's know, great. I, I eat everything at home and, you know, <laughs> coffee for breakfast. So, and, and that's about it. Um, just conservative and my wife, thank God, like she, she's supporting me. Like, I haven't asked her for to contribute financially yet, but you know I know that she's ready to if I need her to. Then so that gives me a little right, bit right. more confidence to go into it. Yeah, I mean, call it uh, buying into gender roles or whatever. Um, you know, I, I'm I'm used to making money, right? Even if it wasn't. You know, it was enough to at least support myself and do whatever it was for my significant others, right? And uh, when I left corporate, I was at a six-figure mark, right? So for me, it's like, all right, I mean, not that I, I expect it to be the super, dis, you know, big machismo, like, dude, right? But being able to provide for my family was something that gave me peace, right? And so when I jumped into this industry, thankfully I had some stuff lined up and so I was comfortable. But as things dwindled down, there was a point in time where I'm like, there's a gap here. Um, the way I ask my wife, you know, essentially for money, right? Because we do have a, fi- there's a lot of stuff with our fancies that are together, but there are certain things that are separate. Um, just that, you know, you know, I want to have her freedom in terms of, you know, you worked hard for your money, like you spend it however you want outside of certain things that we both agreed in our budget for our family. And so like, for me, there's a point of, and I went, and I thought about this, I'm like, is it because I'm, as a man, you're expected to provide. And then for you to turn around and ask your wife for money is like, it can, like, it's soul crushing. It can be soul crushing, right? There's a certain level of like, you're grown, you're, you know, you're a grown man and you're asking for an allowance, right? And, you know, the reality is, you know, when I talked to my wife and thankfully she, you know, she, she, she didn't sit there like, you know, denigrating me or anything like that. But there's a certain level, like, I'm sorry that I'm doing this to you, but like, you know, like, could you cover, you know, the you know, certain bills for this month because, you know, I'm going to be running short until the, the, the closing check comes, right? And th- for me, that's where I realized that, you know, there's, you know, th- I think, you know, CJ, you touched on this earlier, like there's a moment where you, you kind of wake up and say, you can't be doing this, right? You jumped into this, you, you, you knew going into this, this is a business. You need to execute, you need to perform, or you, we don't right. need And yeah. then we still do the knucklehead things where, we're in a situation now where we might not eat, right? And yeah. so for me, that was eye-opening, right? And I, it, it makes you really reevaluate why you're doing this, right? And if you are that committed and dedicated to pursuing this thing, right? And I think this is why I think I said, Caesar, I think you're kind of here to this because, I mean, the industry, you start prior to becoming an agent has a super high failure rate, right? Mm. And 
from you and there's there's another um, chef in the office, right? Uh, Joseph uh, Giordano, right? Okay. Both, both of you have the sim, uh, similar thing. Like him, that man, he he does not sit, does not sit. And years of the kitchen, he's like sitting hurts, it hurts to sit. Right? <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, you know, it's not uh, bragging or something. I just this is just that was my life. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Right? You sleep, you die. Yeah. Right. And this is why it's kind of interesting picking your brains because Caesar, you come from like, bro, I've been doing this, like not the real estate, but this lifestyle. Right. I've yeah. Been doing this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Paul, you and I, I think we're on the other side of that spectrum. We come from security, right? We, and then we had this moment of like, let's see if we sink or swim, right? Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm super grateful um, that y'all made the time to uh, really kind of flesh this out because this has been something that always kind of weighed on me, right? And, and there's a certain level of catharsis, I guess, being able to like talk mm -hmm. it through with some of y'all. Um, yeah, I, I would like yeah. to say thank you. Thank you, thank you. Pleasure, um, no, thank you. But I don't suppose there's anything else you guys want to touch up on? Uh, not it, man. Just uh, thank you for setting all this up and, uh, you know, having us, you know, on this podcast. And I do hope that a lot of newer agents and experienced agents are able to, you know, listen in on this because there's obviously different viewpoints, different opinions. And uh, just like anything else, right? Knowledge. You just want to try to absorb, take in as much, you know, as you can from experience to novice to whatever it is whatever would work best for you you know mm -hmm. so this is great i'm happy <laughs> well, yeah i guess I, you know I thanks, guess for, we'll thanks to... for having me huh? sorry so i think you know thanks for having me it, it was great hearing your stories and you know I, I think we have a lot more in common than than i thought <laughs> but with that said uh caesar where can folks uh, find you on social media? Yeah, so as of right now, uh, Facebook is the, the number one thing. I am working, and I will get it done, Alex. I'm going to work on more uh, media platforms, such as Instagram is probably going to be the next thing I'm going to tackle. Uh, TikTok and YouTube is scary, but it, it, could, it could definitely be there. Uh, as far as uh, my cell phone number, 516-497-5842. Email Caesar Jimenez4. Um, at uh, KW, yeah, see him at his four at KW, right on. Paul, where yeah. can folks find you? Uh, you can find me at Paul Chung underscore mortgages on Instagram. My cell is 917 574 8909. Well, with that said, thank y'all for joining us, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. All right, thank you. Bye. Later, take care, everyone.